from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Senator Leahy, for speaking with us today. As you know, the Library of Congress recently launched an exhibition, Magna Carta, Muse and Mentor. It features the Lincoln Cathedral Magna Carta, one of the four original exemplifications of Magna Carta issued by King John in 1215. The display not only commemorates the 75th anniversary of the first time the King John Lincoln Magna Carta came to the Library of Congress, but also begins the library's celebration of the 800th anniversary of Magna Carta to take place next year. The exhibition illustrates Magna Carta's influence on the history of rule of law and its impact on the development of the constitutional order here in the United States. In particular, it highlights legal principles that trace their roots to 17th century interpretations of Magna Carta. Those legal principles still very much resonate with Americans today the principle of representative government, the right to trial by jury, the right to due process of law, protection from unlawful imprisonment, or the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus, and the theory of limited executive. So I would like to ask you, Senator, a few questions to hear your thoughts on the legacy of Magna Carta. Let's start with, what bearing does Magna Carta have, or should have, should it have on the work of Congress in the 21st century? First, I should mention, I, I went over and saw the exhibit with you, and you were kind enough to take my wife and I and several key members of my office to it. It was a thrill. Uh, you, know, you read about these, you can look at photographs, to stand there, this was a, extremely important to us. It has an amazing uh, part of our history. Not because we copied the Magna Carta, uh, England still does not have a constitution, but we looked at a number of the rights in there. Uh, while those rights were between the, the king and his baron, they still had a number of things. You can't uh, uh, force somebody under torture to testify against themselves. Uh, you have the uh, right of habeas corpus, you have the rights of search and seizure. These are things we've incorporated. The difference, probably one of the key differences in our Constitution, when you look at it, it says, we the people. It meant all the people. Magna Carta meant the king and his barons. Mm -hmm. A great step. But we said, all, we the people, all the people. And I think, though, when I look at it, I think of some of the particular rights in there, uh, the rights of individuals rights of individuals over the king. We incorporate as rights of individual beyond the state, that you cannot trample rights of individuals. The government can't, federal government, state government, local government, just as the king had to respect the rights of those who were signatories. Well, I know that much of the work in Congress is actually done in committee, so I'd like to ask you, what can the historical example of Magna Carta contribute to the work of the committee work, and in particular, the Senate Judiciary Committee? I think we are constantly faced with issues. How do you protect the individual? How do you protect the, the, the person? How do you make sure there's a fair trial? One thing, I, I've written what's called the Innocence Protection Act, to make sure there's more evidence available for anybody accused of a crime, because we know in this country, and it's been demonstrated, especially in the last uh, few decades, the number of people who have been locked up unjustly. Almost every day you have somebody released from prison because they finally looked at all the evidence. Uh, we want to assure that, that happens for everybody. That's a, that's a major area. Uh, the question of what are your individual rights on, on searches. Uh, uh, back then you might have talked about searching one's, one's castle, you know. Uh, well, the searching today isn't so much somebody walking in your front door and going through the papers that you might have in a filing cabinet. Maybe the central government searching your electronic files and they're doing it from a thousand miles away. It is still a search. 
Uh, and again, we go back and say, we've always said the individual is the one who has rights, and those rights can't be trampled. Senator, with almost 50 years of public service, service to the American people, is there a particular project that you've worked on or that you've undertaken that you believe has really advanced the rule of law in an exceptional or enduring way? I think the Innocence Protection Act has done a great deal of that. You know, we, and a lot of other people worked on that. But to see somebody who's been locked up, sometimes for years, sometimes on death, death row, and then you find that the evidence uh, should have been looked at the, the point that one they got the wrong person which means the person who committed the crime is still out there free but to be able to give some recourse so if you're accused of a crime uh, you're going to be able to protect your, your own rights if we don't do that if we don't protect the individuals then it all breaks down uh, and that means individuals you you might not like it's like free speech uh, one of the things that helps us the most in this country, a right of free speech. Now that might be speech you don't like to hear. Uh, somebody might say something about me or anybody else in office and say, boy, I hate, I hate to hear that, but they've got the right to do it. I've often said that uh, one of the greatest rights that we have in our Constitution is in the First Amendment. You've got the right of free speech and that's guaranteed. You have the right to practice any religion you want or none if you want. That, that guarantees diversity. And I'm constantly looking in the Judiciary Committee, what do we do? I mean, I've had the opportunity to take, be the head or senior member of different committees. I've said I'll always take Judiciary because in it I can protect the Constitution. Other committees I'll protect my state of Vermont. But here I'll protect the Constitution. And fortunately, we've had some wonderful people, both parties, over the years have stood up and said, let's protect the Constitution. What would you like Americans to remember about the legacy of Magna Carta in our constitutional law? That it led the foundation to protect individual rights. Uh, it may have been the, the king and his barons there, but it began the opening that individuals have rights that cannot be trampled on by the king. We've expanded our own constitution to say individuals have a right that cannot be trampled by, by the government. Uh, we have habeas corpus, for example. You can't have the government just lock somebody up, mm -hmm. throw away the key. You've got to go by due process of law. That's what's evolved very carefully from what they had there, but we've expanded on it. Again, it's the due process of law. You, don't follow, you can't be arbitrary, no matter who is in charge, no matter who's the police chief or the governor or the president or anybody else. You still have to act within the law. And when you don't act within the law, you're going to be called to account for it. it this country, our country, has a great deal of diversity of thought, uh, certainly large area geographically, over 300 million people. We would not exist as a country if we didn't protect individual rights. And one final question. Uh, what dangers confront Americans if we are not mindful of the history of our most important constitutional rights? We are constantly seeing people say, yeah, but this, the threat is so great set the Constitution aside. There will always be threats. If we start doing that, then we lose everything. Um, we must never do that. I was a prosecutor for eight years. A lot of times I would have loved to have just <laughs> smashed down the door and gone in because I know that the, the property is there. I also knew if I really wanted to get anywhere, I'd better get to a court and I'd better get a search warrant, which I did. Uh, that is something that has to, we have to be reminded, all of us. There's checks and balances, and individuals' rights have to be protected. I, I think, even you come down to it, in a complex world, 
when we're constantly facing different threats from overseas, abroad, or even internally, it is so easy to forget for the moment, well, the heck with individual rights, we got to face this threat. We start doing that, we start forgetting our Constitution, we are going to fail as a country. Fortunately, through some very difficult times, world wars and elsewhere, uh, we may have had a little bit of slippage here and there. We've always come back to what the Constitution stands for. We've been strong as a nation because of that. And when I look at something like the Magna Carta and think of some of these ideas, we looked at that. As a lawyer, as an American, as the head of the Judiciary Committee, that's a thrill. Thank you so much, Senator Leahy, for your thoughts on the enduring legacy of Magna Carta. Thank you. It was a privilege. And thank the Library of Congress for what you're doing. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.